Look at all those things in my fingers, man. means it's the swarm call I have had a phone call from a member of the public a swarm arrived in his garden on Friday and um, we did get in contact with another beekeeper who couldn't make it over and advise that the swarm might leave which is true that the swarm might move on and um, but it hasn't so the swarm has been there for two days so they might be a bit unhappy because the weather hasn't been great the past two days here in North Tyneside so I will go along, come with us, and we'll collect the swarm, it'll be class. Now interestingly, right, this guy who phoned us, he was asking us about costs for collecting swarms. Um, most of the time, if you're getting a service done, you would expect to hear something for someone's time. And I was explaining to the fella that most beekeepers, when you've got like anywhere between 1 and 30 hives, before you become a bee farmer, and it gets a bit more out of control, yeah, most people are insured, have some sort of insurance through the BBK. That's the British Beekeepers Association. It's like a big organisation that the country that supports beekeepers through their local associations. The subsidiaries of the BBK I belong to Newcastle and District Beekeepers Association. And I'm going to soon be affiliated with other associations where I've got my hives because now, as you know, I've got hives up across the northeast and even up in Scotland now. Anyway, the insurance protects you for um, brood diseases. So if, for example, you found European fowl brood or American fowl brood in your hives, and you needed your hives destroyed, which is the course of action to stop the um, fowl broods from spreading, the baby AK's insurance can give you some money back and compensate you for the loss of hives, I suppose. But also, for your beekeeping duties and activities, you're insured but you've got like a portion of their public liability insurance so you're insured to a degree of general beekeeping activities um, and a clause in the BBK insurance says that when you collect the swarms that you don't charge for it um, which I think is quite right because yeah you spend any time collecting swarms right but the beekeeper when I collect a swarm I'm going to come away with a full colony of bees that might be like a prime swarm with a lane queen in there and I've got a full colony. I mean what, it's June now, middle of June nearly. So these are going to build up really well, hopefully, by the end of the season. I could get a box of honey off them. Honey could be sold, I can make money off this colony. Um, it could be a lush, beautiful queen that I graft from, I can improve my stock with it. So yeah, there doesn't need to be any like sort of financial reward. Don't ever pay someone for collecting a swarm. I, if they've travelled far, they might ask for a contribution towards fuel expenses. Um, but you shouldn't be charging for collecting swarms. I did say the guy different story. If the bees were in the brickwork and it was like an actual cutout of a colony, like an extraction, I will be charging for that because that's a long day, sticky job. Um, but it's different from swarm collection. Swarms, the bees are just clumped together they're on a branch. It's fairly straightforward to collect a swarm. It's sometimes difficult, um, but we we'll always hope it's straightforward. So I am go. We're North Tyneside around the Battle Hill area and we're going to get this fella's house, see these bees. And hopefully it'll be an easy collection of this swarm. I'm excited though. Yeah, I'm always excited driving towards a swarm because you never know what you're going to get. It could be huge. It could be a prime swarm or it could be a cast swarm with an unmated queen. But we'll find out. We'll find out together. This morning, right? I had a great morning this morning. Um, if you follow us on my socials, me Insta, Instagram, me Facebook, and that, you'll know I've been doing a bit of work with End. Um, End are, the, are a massive clothing company. They've started Newcastle, um, where I'm from, and in 15 years they've done amazing things as a company, I suppose. They've expanded, like, they've got a shop in Glasgow and London, really popular, high end clothing. Um, and I'm starting to do a bit of partnership work with them, uh, maybe as a biodiversity partner if you will. So I've written an article for them all around beekeeping. There was like really cool illustrations and animation by a guy called Josh Aitken, a local artist. And this art, it's like, you should check it out. 
it's like proper psychedelic old Disney style art. It's so cool. It reminds of like Fantasia, but if you've ever played that game Cuphead, that sort of um, animation, it's wicked like. Um, so then 10 of those guys from End, like members of staff, came to see the bees this morning. What a great time. Um, so much fun. I've got a few snippets like on video, so I'll, I'll share the video, I'll put it edit together. Um, but we're hoping that's going to be a lasting partnership between Pure Buzzing and End, and we can support each other through. Helping me spread the message of pollinators and protecting our biodiversity. Um, hopefully that message getting around to people who might otherwise not be as interested in it. Um, I, you know, we all know fast fashion is a big issue there with sustainability um, and all sorts of things going along with that. But hey, if we're working together, hopefully changes can come from within and from us. Without being too cheesy, I always say it like, let's just be more like honeybees. Let's just take like some inspiration from the super organism. We're all working together and we're all pulling together for the same cause and like incredible things can happen. Incredible things. Thanks Google, straight on. Home. So I secured my ladders to the tree, so I didn't fall. And look, they've laid loads of comb. They must have been here for at least a week to make this much comb. There's what, one, two, three, four bits of comb there. Right, I'll start removing them now. As I say, they're going to start flying, so do beware. There's one bit of comb in. You don't need some pruning while I'm up here, do you? <laughs> Next bit of comb and now there's loads of brood. Oh wow. Now they're flying. You see all that brood and like egg three days, larvae six days, pupa twelve days. They've been here for at least nine days to get the brood to that stage, like, at least. Beware if you're allergic to bees, not a good place to be. Where is she? Look at all those things in my fingers, man. I haven't found the queen.
Right, I'm coming down with this box, there's going to be bees following me. Just um, watch yourself. Oh, I want to get this last bit of comb. Oh, well, that's not good. That's not a good bit. Took plenty of stings to my fingers, eh? <laughs> I'll be feeling that later. So there's um on the comb. There's like brood, capped brood. And an egg stays an egg for three days, hatches into a larva, stays a larva for six days, then it's a pupa for 12. Yeah. So they must have been there for at least six, seven, eight, nine if they've sealed the brood. I reckon even a little bit longer, so maybe hitting on two weeks they've been there. Aye, aye. Uh huh? Didn't notice anything? Aye. Ah, well, I'm pleased you found them and seen them. Like, so they would have stayed. stayed and carried on building the nest. And unfortunately, right, there's a mite in the UK called the Varroa mite, and it, um, it feeds on the honeybees' fat stores, uh -huh. and it's in almost every beehive in most wild colonies collapse due to it because it gives them diseases it leads them because it's been feed on them and it leaves an open wound it leaves them susceptible to viruses right. so most wild colonies die out from the varroa and they found its way in the uk in 1996 so if you look at the numbers of beekeepers around 1999 2000 it dropped off because the varroa was widespread right. and loads of beekeepers are finding the bees dying now we've got treatments that we can use in the hives to combat it um but not many of them remain like Aye, there's a laying queen, so I'm going to go back up in my queen cage, just check the stragglers, and I'll put loads of smoke in the area, because her pheromone's going to be there, and they're going to be flying back. I'll put loads of smoke there, the pheromone's going to remove, and they should find their way down to that box. It is a bit of a distance, but um, so they should do it. About one and a half times bigger. Oh, so it's not that much bigger. It's nah, like she's still quite difficult to see in amongst all the bees, so I will usually mark them with the colour on the back. But, um, the same colour as the ordinary honeybees, aren't they? Aye, aye. But if you're on the internet, the company's called Pure Buzzing. Yeah. I've got a website, social media and stuff. And I've got like pictures I've of queens been, and... I've been interested. I've never, yeah. never knew half as much as I do now. Yeah, the fascinating things, like. Absolutely fascinating little things. Really peculiar. Did you use your smoke before to calm them down? If I used the smoke, I would have riled them up more than anything. Would it? So it doesn't calm them. They sense fire. So they start moving away right. and responding to it. Uh, um, and because they communicate through pheromones, it does mask pheromones. Yeah. But as soon as I put smoke in, they'll think, right, something's up. Start being right. So I just put the box in and you start dropping them in. Uh -huh. And then use the smoke after. I try to use as little smoke as possible, really. Um, it seems to more than it does do any good. <laughs> yeah. I'll go up and see if I see the queen there. Uh, unless when she's swarming, she'll leave. But otherwise she'll just stay in the nest for all of her life. Four years she lives for. Around that. Around four years. If I get her in the cage, I'll show you her. I'll, I'll, she's either in there or up here. Yeah.
There's your queen here, bees. Right, satisfied. I think she's in the box. Yeah, and there are still a couple of hundred up there. They didn't. Ah, uh, she's in there. She's in there because um, I just moved this smoke out of the way. I brought a couple down a bit of comb and the sticking at the entrance of the bums in the air, flapping the wings, and it's spreading like a homing pheromone to indicate that the queen's in there. I'm like 99% certain she is. The bees up there, hopefully they're going to start coming down over the course of tonight and by evening they all should be there. There might be some that linger. They're going to end up being bird food or spider food. And they might linger through. Um, if in a few days there's still loads there, let us know I'll come with another box and I'll sweep them in. Then shake them in the big hive that I'll put these in eventually. So how big was that in the scheme of things? Um, was that an average size hive? Average size swarm, that I would say about 10,000 bees there. Was that? Yeah, yeah. Decent size swarm like. Just impressive to see them with all stages of brood. Yeah. Um, in the comb there. I've never found a swarm where they put so much comb down. I've had like a little teardrop of it, but never I've, so much. There's quite I've, a lot there. I've never seen that in that tree. Yeah. Never seen anything like it, not even the startings of a comb. Uh -huh. So that was impressive to see. Maybe someone got bees last year in one of the gardens. <laughs> yeah, and they've missed got, a swarm. You got the rise in some country part there. Could be some living in the trees, eh? Oh, aye. aye. Especially with this, the trees knocked down after the storm, are we? Aye. There's loads of um, trunks uh. upended. Right. Which is where they, they're going to nest, isn't it? Yeah. Hold your hand. My thumb's stinging a bit still. The rest of the fingers are fine. You've not got proper beekeeper gloves instead of marry gloves. This is all I like to use because the beekeeper gloves are like goat skin, they're really thick. And you kind of feel what you're doing. Um, and you end up clumping frames around and getting more stung. Whereas yeah. I, I don't really mind getting stung. Um, in the head it hurts. But the hands, it's just part yeah, of the job. One of those uh, part of the fun. I'm going to spend another minute searching through them. And I'll untie the ladders. They've already been through a lot, so I won't smoke them anymore. Hey bees. Poor things. Ah, yeah, they are figuring it out. That's encouraging. Oh, yeah, just leave the ladders uh, attached to that. Is it tied on, is it? Aye. I'll tell you what, if they're figuring it out, I'll untie the ladders. 
And when I come to collect them, if there are still loads and loads of these there, I'll stick it up. Or tonight, we'll leave the ladders. And if there are, tonight, I'll put the box up and then I'll get them tomorrow night instead. Yep. I'll leave them there for another day. Um, so now I kind of get all the bees, but I'd rather that many go and stay. So how many, how many still left there? Up there, easily a couple of hundred, like. But they're all behind the branches and in the corners, and you know, the lovely swarms are the ones that you get. That is hanging off a branch like that, and you can yeah, you know, knock straight in. Aye. And the worst ones are like this, or when they're in like a hawthorn bush or something. Okay guys, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it wasn't quite what I expected, as you can probably tell. I was expecting to turn up and get a, a swarm where the bees were clustering together. Um, but yeah, they put down loads of comb. They've been there for at least two, three weeks. Um, yeah, like a couple of comments on the video and that I've got about it. It would have been better, right, if I could have got better access to it and I wasn't just stood on a ladder. And of course, it's unsafe to work from a ladder. And I could have um, removed the comb and just wrapped like fish and wire or elastic bands around empty frames to seal the comb inside the frames. But I just popped them in the box and then when I went back to the apiary, I did that job then. Um, I'll make a little video and show you how the hive's doing now because they're doing really, really well. And they've had a good little build up. I enjoyed taking it down from the tree. Um, and as I said in the video, just like being able to see the bees set up their own home um, and seeing how they do it in the wild. Because of course the bees that I have are all in managed hives. Uh, so it's just a pleasure to see that. I hope you're enjoying watching my content, seeing my swarm collections. There's loads more to come. I'm getting a bit better at um, editing the videos. They do take a, a little while to do, but as I learn more tricks, um, I'll get a bit quicker at it, and there'll be loads more um, videos to come. So yeah, if you want to see more, as all YouTubers say, like, comment, subscribe, and let us know how you find them, or if there's other things that you want to see. Yeah, and just be good to engage with you and see, see how you feel about the videos. But until I upload the next video, and I've got quite a few waiting to go, <laughs> I'll see you all soon. Take care, guys. Good stuff.